All right, welcome to chapter three here. Here we'll be looking at the properties and changes that matter can undergo. Our first video, called the states of matter, on uh, video 3.1. Uh, our main goal here is to contrast the physical states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Uh, turn off your distractions, pause, rewind as you need to, and take some notes in the margin should you need to. Here we go. So states of matter. Um, there are three common states of matter, and the first three are solid, liquid, and gas. You should be pretty familiar with those by now. A couple other ones that are not quite as common in terms of our daily lives is plasma. And uh, we're talking like stars, uh, the sun, uh, lightning bolts. That's plasma, really hot um, ions that are kind of fluid. And the other state of matter is called a Bose-Einstein condensate. And really the simplest way to understand this one is imagine you have a solid, which means the particles are in fixed positions kind of like this. Okay, Imagine they all all of a sudden are in just one spot. So there's eight atoms here. Imagine they're all just overlapped with each other, kind of like this. That's what a Bose-Einstein condensate is, where all the atoms can just kind of be in one position at the same time. It's a very dense state of matter. You only achieve at very, very cold temperatures. So, but let's focus on the things that we're going to deal with most of the time. So first of all, we have solid. Uh, solids are particles that have a definite shape and a definite volume. The particles are packed together tightly, and they vibrate in a fixed position and they're packed so tightly they're incompressible. You can't push them any closer together. So let's start with uh, this picture right here. Here you can see the particles are nicely arranged and they're in a, um, they're packed together and they kind of take up their own shape so the, the, the box here itself actually has more room in it. Like we can actually put more stuff right here and more right here. So a solid takes its own shape essentially. A definite shape it has a definite volume. Here this picture shows a little more clearly how this solid basically just stays together. It doesn't go out to the, to the edge of the container walls. It just stays together. It's own definite shape. Uh, particles are packed tight together like you can see here. And also, although the particles are packed tight together, uh, the particles actually do move a little bit. They just vibrate back and forth in these positions like you're seeing right there. And here's just a good example of what a, what a solid might look like. Here's a, some kind of gem or something. Up next we have the liquid. Liquids, they uh, what's unique about them is that they take the shape of their container with respect to gravity. So they always get pulled down to the bottom. So here's your container. You'll find the liquid particles at the bottom of the container because gravity pulls them down. Okay, And they take the shape of the container, so they fill it to a cylinder. This one's taking the shape of the, the cube itself, but not filling out the top there. Um, so they have no definite shape, but they do have a definite volume. So if, if there's uh, 50 mils in this beaker that you're seeing right here, if I put it into another space, it'll still occupy 50 milliliters of space. So the volume is definite, that's not going to change. What's unique about the particles is they are still also very close together, so you really can't compress these things uh, together any closer. Um, but what's unique about these particles too is that they can flow past one another. Um, so they have the ability to keep sliding and moving around uh, like that. And here's three examples um, of liquids. Here's just some water. Here's uh, our liquid metal, which is mercury. And then gasoline, that also is a liquid. All right, and our last state of matter is gases. Gases do not have any definite shape, nor a definite volume. Their shape and volume is exactly what their container is. So if the container is five liters, the gas occupies five liters. And it takes a shape of that container like this. Or if you have a, or a Florence flask, it takes a shape of that flask as well, or a bottle. So uh, no definite shape, no definite volume. Particles are very far apart, which means you now can compress them. So if you exert an outside force in this, you can actually cause those gases to squ uh, squish closer together. So they are compressible. And gas particles are constantly moving and fill their entire container. So um, in addition, let's say there was like a a piston right here and we pull the piston back so now the space occupies here the gas will expand and fill a container as well. Here's some examples of gases you can see moving around in a box, moving around in a box. Here we have uh, a, a colorless gas, uh, it could be anything, it could be oxygen, it could be hydrogen, that's a colorless gas. Here we have uh, chlorine, chlorine is actually a yellow gas and it's diatomic, it's Cl2. And then here we have um, nitrogen monoxide and here we have nitrogen dioxide. And these are kind of a brownish gas or a gold gas there. So gases can have color, uh, believe it or not. So here's your three states of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. Just kind of compare them when you see them all together. Again, fixed volume, fixed shape. This one has a fixed volume but takes the shape of the container. And gases don't have a fixed volume or shape. They take the shape and volume of their container like you see there. Particles vibrate in fixed positions there. 
Here the particles can flow past each other, but they do stay in the bottom part of the container with respect to gravity pulling all the particles down. And gases are constantly moving in a straight line, always moving, and they fill the entire container like you can see there. Uh, a couple more things here. So gas and vapor, what's the difference? You may have heard both those words. Well, vapor is a term often used by meteorologists, and uh, vapor basically describes uh, a substance that is gaseous, but it's normally in the solid or liquid state of matter at room temperature. Um, so you think about it, water at room temperature is typically a gas, but it does have the ability to evaporate into the gas phase, so it goes from liquid to gas at uh, room temperature, and now we call that gas a vapor. So vapor, again, just used for things that are typically not uh, gas at room temperature. So let's give the states a matter of the, the following here. Water is H2O, and we should know that water is a, is a liquid. Now we have water vapor, which is steam, and that's basically water, but now it's a gas. So put a little G at the end of it like that. Uh, oxygen, that's O2, and O2 oxygen is a gas. Carbon dioxide is something we breathe out. We should know that's a, a gas. Dry ice is uh, like Halloween fog uh, in a punch bowl kind of thing. Dry ice is actually solidified carbon dioxide, so it's a solid. And table salt is a solid. NaCl is a solid. Okay. All right, so that's it for your states of matters. Make sure you study up on the different types there. And uh, basically, it's one of the properties that matter can have. What is its current state?